manure in it, we have to follow the organic standards for making compost with manure, which requires that we achieve elevated temperatures and for a certain period of time and turn a certain number of, a certain number of times. We call this vetch. The Latin is vicia. Okay. This is a very good plant for nitrogen fixation. This plant will fix, this, this plant can fix uh, about 200 kilos of nitrogen per hectare in a year, which is basically as much as any of our crops would need. So the honeybees, uh, you, you, you're a beekeeper, you take care of bees, you come out one day and you have a beehive and all the bees are gone. That's called colony collapse disorder. What that has shown us is how much we depend upon one species of insect for a lot of our food. Mm -hmm. So the research that's going on in those fenced in area is being done by Neil Williams, who's a professor in entomology and his graduate students. An example of the sort of research that's gone on out here over the years of a more ecological approach to agriculture. We've done a lot of research on, on cover crops and how cover crops can provide the nitrogen, uh, legumes can provide the nitrogen that our crops need, what sort of impact, how we manage those best, what sort of impact they have on other soil properties like soil physical properties. A lot of research on biological control of insects has happened here. So a lot of the research that's been done here has been geared towards more ecological ways of farming, but also a lot of it has been geared towards sort of what we might call low input systems or in systems that are appropriate for smaller scale systems. We have a CSA program, Community Supported Agriculture Subscription Farming. So we have 70 households that get a basket of produce from us each week. Time on these plots. Um, the idea of a long-term experiment is that soil properties often take a long time to change. They don't happen right away. And research grants are usually two to three years. So what we are hoping to do here is have, over time, you have a long-term experiment that things are maintained, so you see changes like soil carbon has increased on the organic, um, whereas in our wheat plots, the soil carbon has not changed at all. Things. And over time, we've looked at greenhouse gas emissions, we've looked at the soil, a lot of research on soil, like soil microbial communities, soil nematodes, soil carbon, nitrogen. Uh, you can also study water is a big question here. It's something we want to study a lot. Um, we've looked at drip versus furrow irrigation on the plots and looking at the effect on greenhouse gas emissions. And we found that drip irrigation has lower greenhouse gas emissions than furrow irrigation. There's been, in the organic, we put on the compost, we put on cover crops. All of that increases the soil carbon. You guys know soil carbon? Like organic matter, which is great. We also have more microbial biomass organic. More microbes are eating each other, creating better soil structure. Um, we have, uh, for our yield measuring, we also have a standard protocol for the facility for when we take the yield measuring strips. And we also take this, the tomato vine, we take the tomato, the wheat straw, we all, we archive each of those. And that has a I, um, I'm Deputy Director of Ag Sustainability Institute, so I've had to pull my head out of the soil only and mm -hmm. think about bigger and uh, thinking of how things connect um, and, and working um, at this scale. And also Emma maybe is talking about the new vision, like what the new directions we're trying to go in here. Yeah. Think how the world has changed and, and perhaps how we should change the kinds of questions we're asking here. I'm sure you would have lots of input <laughs> to the kinds of questions we should be asking. Well,